reading even faster now than just a few moments ago. Hi everyone, Dan Gunther here. Welcome to the first episode of the Treklet Report, where I take a new Star Trek novel and do a video review. First of all, please pay no attention to the order in which I have arranged the books on this shelf. I had to do it in a hurry to film this video. I will be reorganizing later. I've already been called out on Facebook for not having them in the proper order. So apologies for that. This week on the Treklet Report, I am reviewing the new Star Trek TOS novel, The Face of the Unknown by Christopher L. Bennett. The Corbomite Maneuver was the first regular production episode of Star Trek shot after the two pilots. The show was still finding itself somewhat, however, the episode did embody a lot of the traits that we think of when we think of Star Trek today. The thrill of exploration, the idea that an enemy could actually be a friend. As a result, the Corbomite Maneuver is a favorite of many fans, myself included. The Face of the Unknown is a sequel to that much-loved episode. In this novel, we once again encounter the First Federation and their massive orb ships, like the one that the Enterprise encountered, commanded by Baylock in the Corbomite Maneuver. If you will recall the end of the episode, the scary version of Baylock that we were introduced to turns out to be nothing more than a puppet used to intimidate new crews encountered by the First Federation. The real Baylock was actually a diminutive alien kind of childlike and definitely non-threatening. Commander, that puppet... My alter ego, so to speak. In your culture, he would be Mr. High to my Jekyll. You must admit he's effective. You would never have been frightened by me. However, in this novel we learn that the puppet version of Baylock is in fact based on a real race of aliens called the Dasik, who are believed to have gone extinct many years ago. The Dasik have reappeared, attacking ships near the space of the First Federation, and of course it's up to Kirk and the crew of the Enterprise to investigate. In the course of their investigation, with a little help from Baylock, they discover the world of the First Federation, which is actually a gas giant containing a habitat with the equivalent space of hundreds of different worlds all living together in a massive habitat. The First Federation is an organization of many different alien species who have come together in order to survive. However, we soon learn that several forces are coming together to possibly destroy the world that they've created. The Face of the Unknown features some top-notch Star Trek storytelling. There's a very obvious environmental message here. The threat faced by the First Federation habitat is very much akin to climate change, and the author makes several parallels here that leap off the page at the reader. The science of what the civilization is doing to the environment of the gas giant is largely ignored for fear of facing their own mortality. The energy output of the massive habitat of the First Federation is upsetting the delicate balance of the gas giant and threatening wide-scale storms and various other activities that might destroy the civilization. At the same time, discoveries are made about the Dasik, who it turns out have a very close connection to the Linux which is the name of Baylock's people. The two people share a common past and a dark secret that, if revealed, might shake the foundations of the First Federation civilization. Both of these plots center around the idea of fear and the consequences of not facing that fear. The rulers of the First Federation fear the idea that their civilization may be destroyed and are thus unwilling to face that prospect and the Linux fear the revelations about their past. It is only in addressing these fears that the people of the First Federation can move forward and cure the ills that plague their society. Another aspect of this story that I really appreciated was its treatment of the character of Spock. The story takes place shortly after the final episode of the original series, Turnabout Intruder, but before the beginning of the animated series. In a move that I wasn't expecting at all, author Christopher L. Bennett takes the opportunity to address several aspects of Spock's character that became apparent during the much maligned third season of Star Trek. Several times during that season, Spock acts seemingly out of character, most notably in the episode The Cloudminders, in which he flirts with a beautiful woman named Droxine, seemingly only because she is beautiful, definitely out of character for the Spock that we know and love. Bennett actually explains these lapses in logic in a very unique and interesting way, they essentially stem from Spock's dissolved betrothal in the second season episode of Mock Time. I'm not going to spoil it here, but Spock's exploration of these issues is a definite highlight of this story. 
The Face of the Unknown is a great start to this year's Treklet lineup, some terrific character moments for the main cast as well as several secondary characters. You may remember Lieutenant Bailey from the Corbomite Maneuver. At the end of that episode, he leaves to become the ambassador to the First Federation, and now after three years, he has grown a lot in his role, but is still experiencing a lot of the frustrations of his youth. He has a very interesting character arc within this story, as does a young Dasik fighter named Koost, who really surprised me with the depth of his character. It is through him that we really learn that there is a lot more to the Dasik than meets the eye. My final rating for The Face of the Unknown is 4 out of 5 boisterous Baylock laughs. <laughs> there is also a literary Trex episode about this novel. I'll have a link in the description to the show page and a link somewhere above me here probably to uh, where you can listen to that show on YouTube. How about you? Have you read The Face of the Unknown? What did you think? Leave a comment below and I'll be sure to respond to it. Last week's video was a review of the Enterprise episode Divergence. Here's what you had to say. Hosrex wrote, I love Judith and Garfield Reeves Stevens. I've read every Trek thing they've ever written. I agree completely. They are a definite boon to the Star Trek universe. In fact, over on the Literary Treks podcast, Bruce Gibson, Matthew Rushing, and I recently spoke about the William Shatner novel Spectre. That episode isn't quite out yet, but I will have a link to it once we have it available. Spectre and, of course, the rest of the William Shatner verse novels were co-written with Judith and Garfield Reeve Stevens, and their supreme talent in writing about Star Trek shines through on every page. Well, thank you all so much for watching. Next week, I will have the first episode of the brand new Star Trek News Desk, where I have a roundup of all the Star Trek news from the past month. Be sure to like this video if you liked it, subscribe for news and information and reviews from all over the Star Trek universe, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and have a great week.